Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So before we get started, I um, guess we'll say there's a couple things in the news lately. It seems like a lot of stars have been granted their releases from the company, and as of today, I believe Brian Hebner as well has been granted his release. Um, it's no secret that Anthem is obviously cutting costs to, well, make the best out of a bad situation, I guess you could say. Um, I, I think a lot of this has to do with them possibly picking everything up and moving it to Canada. At least that's how I'm viewing it. Um, I'm sure this was told to all the people in the locker room. You know, they might have said, hey, we're going to be doing a lot of tapings or all tapings from Canada. And if you guys don't want to be a part of it, then you can ask for your release and we'll grant it. I mean, a lot of the guys that were released were, well, I, I've been watching Impact Weekly since August, and most of the names on the list were people that I haven't seen on TV. So I, I it could have been a, a couple of things. But on a positive note, Bound for Glory is officially sold out. Um, I don't believe the tapings have sold out yet. I know they were giving tickets away and giving huge discounts, but... Again, if you're moving it to a whole new territory, as they've been based in Orlando for the last, what, 15 years or so, um, it's it's obviously going to take a little more than just saying, hey guys, we're here, come watch us. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of rumors going on. Uh, I believe Ricochet has been, I guess, in t contact with Impact, or Impact contacted him about coming to work there, and it didn't seem like anything was really going to happen. Um, he's still contracted with Lucha Underground, and I don't believe he can appear on another television show till January or so. So if there's any chance that he does join Impact, it won't be till the next round of tapings. Uh, Tessa Blanchard has been rumored to have joined them and should be at the Canada tapings. Um, another news, I guess James Storm's contract is up in or January 1st, and there is talks that he could be going back to WWE and NXT um, as he turned them down because he wanted to stay with his family and things like that and didn't want to do the schedule that WWE requires for their talent. So, But, like I said, Bound for Glory, a couple days away. So let's get into the go-home show. So uh, we open the show with... A match in Canada at Border City Wrestling where Rosemary and Allie are taking on Sienna and Casey Spinelli. I guess she's a local talent there in Canada. She looked good in the match. This was a fun match. They gave it probably about 10 minutes. Um, good back and forth. Allie looks to be improving in the ring, which is always a good thing because, like I had said, she seemed to be the weakest of the knockouts in the, the triple threat match at Bound for Glory. Um, and Allie actually picked up the victory. So Sienna inadvertently kicks Casey uh, as Allie stepped out of the way, and uh, Allie hits Sienna with a code breaker, and Rosemary hits her with a German suplex, and Allie pins Sienna for the win. So not that I'm expecting her to win the match at Bound for Glory, but good to see her getting a victory. Uh, after that, we get a video package of Moose and Stefan Bonner and American Top Team and all their feud that's transpired over the last couple of months. Um, we hear from both sides. Uh, I don't know where they're going with this after Bound for Glory. I don't know if they were just contracted to do this up until then. I don't know, like I said, what their end game is because I can't imagine these guys came cheap. Um, I'm... I'm I would hope they did put some eyes on the company, at least fans that you normally wouldn't get. But I'm hoping it's done and over with, but we'll see. So then American Top Team and Lashley come out to the ring. Uh, they come out and say that they are here to, or at Bound for Glory, they're going to expose wrestling and wrestling fans for the frauds that they are. Um, Dan Lambert runs down everything as usual, and they also say they're going to put Impact out of business, which... I don't think they're going to need to do that. No, that's a joke. Um, but, yeah, again, like I said, where are we going after this? Hopefully gone. 
Uh, so then we get a video package of Grado and Joseph Park and their whole feud leading up to, obviously, the Monster Ball match between Grado and Abyss. So that should be interesting. After that, we head over to Japan, where Moose and Hokobayashi are facing uh, Nakajima and Kyo, Kiyo, my, Kiyo Mio. That's who it was, yes. Uh, this was a fun match. Uh, like I said, I love the fact that they are glo going global. Uh, it gives you a chance to watch talent you wouldn't normally be able to watch. And I think Josh Matthews kept saying that, you know, the only way you were able to watch this stuff years ago is by tape trading and things like that. And while he is right, I mean, the Internet has everything if you really search for it. But uh, like I said, I, I really didn't see any of these guys match uh, match wrestle previously, so it was cool to see. And uh, Hokobayashi ends up getting the win after hitting a top rope splash. So, uh, yeah, the Japanese strong style played a big part in this match, a lot of hard hitting and things like that. And uh, Moose was getting, I'd say, a decent reaction from the uh, crowd in pro wrestling Noah. So. so this segment next was probably my favorite of the night. So we are uh, in LAX's hideout, and they're playing one of their games, and uh, Eli and Chris Adonis come and interrupt. And apparently, Chris Adonis brought them a gift, which was nachos and guacamole. So Conan looks at him and goes, you know what I think your gift? Throws it on the ground. And he says, I don't know if you guys made a wrong turn, but the vegan joint tanning salon and TRT centers are the other way. And he's like, so unless you're here to score some Bon Jovi tickets, uh, get the hell out of here. And I think Eli made some living on a prayer reference. It was good. And... Uh, uh, Eli says, you know, we, we both have problems. You guys have problems with OVE, and I have problems with Johnny Impact, and you guys are looking to get your titles back, and I have a title. And he says, you know, maybe we should team up. And Conan says, you know, all right, this one time only. We're not a clique. We're not friends. We're none of this. But we'll team up one time just to help each other out so we can dis decimate our opponents before Bound for Glory. And uh, then Conan looks at him, and he says, and after this, we're coming for this, and he's pointing to the championship. So anything with LAX and uh, Eli Drake backstage is always pretty good. Very entertaining. After that, we get a video package of the LAX and OVE feud hyping up their match at Pound for Glory. Good stuff. I, I think this has the possibility to steal the show, especially with the rumored Sammy Callahan joining them. And then after that, we get a video package of the X Division stars. So apparently, Trevor Lee had asked for a six-person match because, well, we we're getting a six-person match at Bound for Glory, which would pit Trevor Lee against Matt Seidel versus Sanjay Dutt versus Desmond Xavier versus Petey Williams versus Garza Jr. And on this episode of Impact, we got a non-title version of this match because I guess Trevor Lee wanted to see how it played out. So... After this promo video, we head right to the match, and not a surprise here, any X-Division match is a lot of fun, um, a lot of good spots, high-flying as usual, all these guys work well together, and it's definitely a preview of things to come at Bound for Glory, I'm sure they'll probably um, maybe do some more crazier spots at, at the, the pay-per-view. But uh, Desmond Xavier picks up the win with a back handspring elbow kick on Trevor Lee. So pinning the champion in a non-title match. Um, I would honestly be happy if any of these guys won the match at Bound for Glory. Uh, any of these six with the X Division title would be great. And you have six people in the X Division now that will be vying, I'm sure, for the title from now on. So... Uh, Garza Jr. was kind of he's kind of been thrown around since he was what with Johnny Impact a couple weeks ago facing him and then teaming up with him and now he's with the X Division but I mean the X Division was never supposed to be a certain set like I guess you could just bounce around um, but yeah so good match after that we get a video package of Team Impact and triple a where their feud has gone and how it's come to fruition and the match is bound for glory and then after that we get a video package of the women with gail sienna and Allie 
building up to their match at Bound for Glory. I believe before the first match got underway of the show, we did see a Rosemary and Taya video package. And then, of course, after the women's package, we got uh, Gail coming to the ring, being interviewed by Jeremy Borash. And uh, it's apparently the 10th anniversary of the Knockout Championship because it was first brought in and bound for glory back in 2007 and uh apparently gail kim 12 years ago so 2005 she had when she had come to the company she had envisioned you know the women fighting on the in tna when it was then um and kind of just bringing a whole new division and that's kind of how the knockouts division was created and how she became the first knockout champion and that she plans on regaining the title and retiring with it after bound for glory so uh, yeah gail kim's last bound for glory um and like i've said the knockouts division has always been a huge spotlight for tna impact gfw whatever the hell you want to call them um so and i hope that continues because there is such good women's wrestling on the indies that if they're not going to WWE, Impact should definitely focus on building that up and making that a spotlight. Uh, after that, we get a video package of the Eli Drake and Johnny Impact feud. And that brought us to the main event of Eli Drake and LAX versus OVE and Johnny Impact. So before the match gets underway, um, the heels came out first, and then OVE came out. LAX and Eli Drake attack ove and beat them down um eli kind of hides up on the entrance ramp before johnny impact makes his way out holding the title impact comes down johnny hits him in the back of the head so they gain the upper hand uh this is a decent match though um a lot of moving parts here uh quick paced match um and actually the ending was a little abrupt surprise it came this way but uh johnny impact picks up the win after hitting Santana with a sunset flip and then just, like, kind of holding him down. Um, after the match, uh, Eli... Actually, yeah, Eli and Adonis beat down Johnny Impact and OVE and LAX battled to the back. Uh, at that point, uh, Eli ripped the turnbuckle padding off and then <laughs> Adonis grabbed a, a box cutter and I was like, what, is he going to cut Impact? I was like, that's stupid. So apparently they decide to cut the uh, the ring skirt and then pull up the canvas and the padding underneath to expose the wood planks, which Johnny Impact ended up getting hit with the gravy train by Eli Drake onto the exposed boards. And that's how we ended the show. So pretty standard as your go-home show, considering the fact that you know most of these feuds have been built uh, coming into it so it was just a lot of video packages and a couple of good matches so i can't complain about good wrestling um yeah so i guess within the next couple of days i'll have a bound for glory preview and prediction video up and hopefully some more good news for impact but otherwise this has been my impact wrestling review if you like what you've seen here please like share and subscribe bye